For quite some time, TfL has been talking about extending the Bakerloo line to Lewisham. It's a project that would see the Tube enter an area of London that's currently quite poorly served by the underground. But this isn't the first time such an extension has been proposed. Or the second. Or even the third. The fact is, a southeastern extension of the Bakerloo line has been a serious concept for over a hundred years. The 1920s were a time of expansion for the London Underground. Much of the central London tube network we have today was already in place, minus the Jubilee and Victoria lines. Now the focus was on extending into the suburbs. There were plenty of railways in the suburbs, but these were seen as slow and old-fashioned compared to the modern electric tubes. The Southern Railway, in particular, fought back with a programme of electrification, but nevertheless, the London suburbs were seen by the underground companies as ripe for the plucking. South East London had plenty of railways, but they had been built by four different companies. The London Brighton and South Coast, the South Eastern Railway, the London and South Western Railway, and the London Chatham and Dover Railway. These companies had been more interested in fighting each other than providing a coherent network. So there were anomalies like the existence of two close but unconnected stations in Catford, and the whole New Cross, New Cross Gate situation. The service could have been better. The earliest serious proposal for an underground line here seems to have been in 1913. That year, the Lord Mayor of London suggested an extension to Crystal Palace, via Camberwell Green, Dulwich and Sydenham Hill. The first proposal from the railway company themselves would appear to have come in 1921. This would have extended the service from Elephant and Castle to Camberwell, Dulwich and Sydenham, not too dissimilar to the 1913 proposal. The concept was refined a little. In 1922, a report was submitted which would have taken the line to Orpington. Two different routes were proposed. One would have gone via Camberwell and Loughborough Junction, and the other would have gone via Catford. There was much discussion over the following years. In 1926, a public inquiry came to the conclusion that Camberwell, at least, was a desirable place to extend to. Despite this, the directors of Underground Electric Railways of London were not so keen. Perhaps because, at this time, they were extending the Northern Line down to Morden and planning to run the Piccadilly Line up to Cockfosters. And they felt that they didn't want to spend any more money right now, but that's just me speculating. But while the UERL board weren't keen, the actual people who ran their tube lines were. J.P. Thomas, the operational manager, championed a different version in 1928. Again, it would run through Camberwell, then Dulwich, then terminate at Rushy Green. In 1931, an extension was actually authorised. This was a time when the government was looking to alleviate unemployment, so there was plenty of money available for large-scale projects. The extension would have been a relatively short one, with two stations at Albany and Camberwell. The Camberwell station would have been at Denmark Hill. It's not clear whether this would have been connected with the mainline station there, but I'm just going to say that if you're planning to steal passengers from the mainline companies, you should at least endeavour to get close. But despite government assistance, there were financial setbacks, and the project was abandoned in 1937 in favour of extending the Northern Line into North London, which also didn't go as planned, but that's another story. Even though the project was abandoned in 1937, some work was actually carried out in 1940. As the Bakerloo had parliamentary permission to build their extension, they used it to extend just a little way. Enough for sidings at Elephant and Castle. I've heard a few people claim that there's totally a secret tunnel to Camberwell, and I suspect this is what they're thinking of. Obviously, what with there being a war on, most major infrastructure projects were put on hold. Then, in 1946, yet another scheme was put forward. This one to Hearn Hill. By the end of the Second World War, the underground was starting to show its age. Stations that had been fine in the early 20th century were struggling with the intensive services of the 1940s. Elephant and Castle was a case in point. A two-platform terminus just didn't provide enough space. Trains had to be turned around in just two minutes. The options were to rebuild Elephant and Castle, or to extend south and build a new terminus elsewhere. 
So the old extension plans were dusted off and once again an extension to Camberwell was on the cards in 1948. This one would have terminated at Camberwell Green. In fact, this came so close to getting built that on some maps and even some station signs it was advertised that services to Camberwell were on the way. But, yet again, this scheme was thwarted by, yes, a lack of money. In 1950, this version of the extension was abandoned. But not for long. In the 1950s, a new line was in the planning stages, one that would cut across central London and head out into the northeastern suburbs. This would be known as the Victoria Line. What was not so clear was where the southern end would terminate. There was still a perceived need for underground connections south of the river. The main line services were badly overcrowded. In fact, so much so that the line from Charing Cross to Dartford saw Britain's first and only double-decker trains. While extending the new tube line was one possibility, two others involved, yes, the Bakerloo line. The first would have gone towards North Kent, and I would suggest that this would likely have ended at Lewisham, but it was fairly vague. The other possibility was to go to Brixton via, you guessed it, Camberwell. In the end, of course, the Victoria Line went to Brixton instead, opening in 1971. But while this was going on, in 1964, London Underground turned its attention to Peckham Rye. This, again, was given very serious consideration right into the 1970s. It appeared in financial plans made by London Transport and the Greater London Council. It was a high-priority project, with only the Jubilee Line and the Heathrow extension of the Piccadilly Line being considered more important. This time it was definitely going to happen. But it didn't. The powers that be ummed and ahed about it before fobbing it off onto the London Rail Study, who said that it probably wasn't worth the money. London Transport instead suggested an express bus route, which also didn't happen, but didn't happen more cost-effectively. In the late 1980s, two more ideas were thrown at the wall to see what stuck. One would have extended the Bakerloo line into the Docklands via Canary Wharf. The 80s saw the beginning of the regeneration of London's old docks, and of course if you want to create a new urban district you need transport links. I imagine that this would have been very similar to the Jubilee Line extension of 1999. However, instead we got the Docklands Light Railway and, of course, the aforementioned Jubilee Line extension. The second proposal is very relevant, because it would have sent the Bakerloo down the Old Kent Road to Lewisham in what sounds identical to the most recent scheme. At the time, Lewisham had no DLR station, so arguably there was an even stronger case for a tube line. In 2006, three proposals were made in Transport for London's report, Transport 2025. The first would have gone through Burgess Park and Peckham Rye to Catford Bridge. From there, though this part was less concrete, the Bakerloo might have taken over the railway line to Hayes. The second would have gone to Tulse Hill before branching off in two directions, one to Streatham Hill and the other taking over the railway to Beckenham Junction. The third was kind of a revival of the 80s idea of running along the Old Kent Road to Lewisham, and from there, again, taking over the Hayes Line. By 2014, things were looking more definite. The line would certainly go to Lewisham, then take over the line to Hayes. The question was whether it would go via Camberwell and Peckham Rye, or Old Kent Road and Burgess Park. Another option was on the table. A branch to Bromley South, again taking over the railway. The latter was a sticking point with Bromley Council, who didn't want to lose their railway and its express service to London Bridge. More proposals were advanced, with the line to terminate at Croydon, Woolwich Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Streatham and Orpington, but none of these went very far. In 2018, the Royal Borough of Greenwich and the Canary Wharf Group put their heads together and came up with a completely different extension. This one through the Docklands, Greenwich and terminating at Charlton. The argument was that the Jubilee line was overcrowded. Obviously, the residents of those boroughs that would be bypassed by this version of the extension were not happy, and the plan doesn't seem to have ever been under really serious consideration. In 2019, TfL settled on an extension to Lewisham, going no further, for now. They hadn't totally abandoned the idea of extending further, they just decided it wasn't a priority. 
In 2021, the land was safeguarded for the route, and it seemed that if there was to be an extension, it would be to Hayes. But, well, money. You may recall that pandemic that ruined the early 2020s. The economic slump meant that the funds weren't available to actually carry the extension out. At present, the scheme is on indefinite hold, but work continues on making it happen. So, let's count those schemes up. That's 26. That isn't even all of the proposals. The plans I've talked about took quite a bit of refining to get to where they were. Still, I'm sure we'll eventually get that extension. Someday. For sure. Good evening, I hope you enjoyed this extensive tale from the Tube. If you did, please do click the like button to let YouTube know. Subscribe for more on the Tube if that's your jam, and I sometimes cover things that have nothing whatsoever to do with the Underground if you'd prefer that. Thanks as always to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, you are the available funds to my Tube extension. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the Tube.